No, yeah, so it's, it's noisy and uh, uh, okay. So this is not uh, a museum. There is no museum at CERN. This is a lab and it's working lab. And uh, first of all, if you get a little bit close to me to see the walls, to understand what's going on. Uh, uh, to that side you have Switzerland and the Alps behind. If you're lucky enough to take the cafe from the cafeteria from the outside, you can see the Mont Blanc, which is there. This is Lake of Geneva. This is the airport. You probably landed here, unless you took a bus or a train, yeah? Um, then, this is the machine, the LHC. It's 100 meters underneath. I'll explain shortly why is it 100 meters underneath. And it goes, it's a circle of 27 kilometers. This is the French side. And this is the Jura Mountain which are very early mountain. Actually, if you go high from there, there is a place just behind here called Lamura, where you can find, you can see eggs of dinosaurs still there. Huh? You can visit it. And it's not far away. So this is the machine. It's tangent to the mountain, the Jura mountain this side, and it's tangent to Geneva airport that side. The machine is 100 meters underneath. Why? First of all, we need to hide the machine. We have uh, particles which are protons running inside with high energy, if they touch the material, they can break the nuclei and make particles flying off. A particle that flies off, we call it radiation, and it can do damage basically to biological material and do induce cancers or even death or burn, skin burn or tissue burn. Okay? So that this has to be, it's very nasty, radiations are very nasty. So this is 100 meters underneath. Why it could be 5 meters, could be enough. Why is it 100 meters? Simply because of the geography, as I told you, this is the Jura, this is the Alps, which means that the, the, the ground here is rocky, rocky. You need heavy machines, and loads of money to dig a hole in it. So now they try to dig those to find where, where is soft material. And the lucky enough, many meters underneath, they found some kind of material which is called molas in French. In, in English, we call it wet sand. So it's easy to dig in and to make a tunnel. It's like the tube in, in, in London, yeah? The tunnel is exactly the same size as the tube. Uh, you have a place for a train like the tube itself. And uh, it's 27 kilometers, so it's double. Uh, we have double benefits. It's easy to dig. You don't need to, to use uh, explosives or whatever because it's just wet sand and any machine could break a hook in it. And then, uh, it, since it's uh, soft, it absorbs um, uh, it absorbs vibration, so the tunnel could hold. The machine is so precise that you could feel the moon, the tides. You know the moon? It does gravitational attraction. Immediately it's easy to see the Atlantic moving thanks to the tide of the moon. But it does have, does have the same effect on the ground. It does deform the ground here. So when we are running this machine, we have such a precision, which is below a micrometer, uh, that we know exactly where is the moon in each second. More than that, when it rains on the surface, it may overweight in some places of the ground. We do feel it. It does deform the machine by 100 or 200 nanometers. We know it exactly. So we can tell you the distribution of water on the surface. The machine is so precise that even when you stop the train in Geneva railway station, just put the motor on because it's electric motor, the spark that it induces in pulling power from the, the uh, electric line, uh, we feel it. The protons that are running in the machine do feel it. And we know that the train has just started its engine engineering. Yeah. So it's a huge machine, the world's largest machine, the world's coolest machine, because I explained to you that we cool it down to uh, something like minus 270 Celsius. Um, so 